Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK and this is Christopher. Hello. One of our junior foragers for today and uh, we've been out foraging and we've had a lovely successful morning. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you now the sort of things that we do with mushrooms after we get them home. I'm going to prepare or we're going to prepare together some giant puffball schnitzels for you and I'm going to show you how to dry and store some mushrooms in the meantime. So first of all over here We'll just go through what we've found. I think you know all of these by now, Christopher. So what yeah. have we got? Giant puffball. Yeah. A fairy ring champignon. Yeah. Chickweed. Yeah. And field mushrooms. Okay, and what's your favourite? A giant puffball. Okay, good stuff. Right, that's what we've got. He's absolutely right. Um, but as I said, we had a successful day. We're not going to eat all of this today. What we're going to make is some giant puffball schnitzels. And then whilst we're doing that, whilst we're preparing those, or whilst Christopher's preparing those, uh, I'm going to show you what we do to dry and store the other mushrooms. So first of all, these are our giant puffballs, and these are small ones. I would never normally have picked giant puffballs of this size. They're, uh, they're very young, uh, but they were both kicked over. And this one, as you can see, is a bit damaged on the base, so I thought I'd have them. Now, first of all, what we're going to do is put our pan on the heat and get some butter heating up because butter and mushrooms is a lovely combination. And then what we're going to do is slice some giant puffball steaks out of our puffballs. And just to show you, when they're edible, they are white and spongy all the way through. As they get older, they'll start to yellow inside and then eventually these giant puffballs will turn to dust inside. And as soon as they start to yellow, you shouldn't eat them anymore. They can give you a little bit of gastric upset. So we can see here, we've got nice, fresh, white puffballs all the way through, which is good. So I'm just gonna trim off the muddy skin. I'm not too fussed with the young ones like this about the rest of the skin because it's still quite thin. It can on older, bigger mushrooms, and these get huge. I think the record in the UK was something like 72 inches in the diameter or circumference, I'm not sure which, but a big mushroom. I think the world record is actually held in, in Canada or the northern United States somewhere, and uh, it's even bigger than that. So, as I said, these mushrooms get huge. Now, what I'm doing, is cutting them into little steaks, about a centimetre and a half thick. Uh, about that size. And what's gonna happen is just like with all mushrooms, when we put them on the heat, when we cook them, they will shrink and they'll shrink quite a lot. So come over here, we'll put these into our melted butter. And Christopher's just going to watch those for me for a little while, aren't you? And uh, turn them over when they get a little bit brown on one side. We'll, uh, we'll come back and have another look at those in, the min in, a, in a minute. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to show you how we dry these particular mushrooms. First of all, our mousseron. Now, these are by far the easiest mushroom to dry of all of them. They dry naturally. So to dry your mousseron, it can be as simple leave them on a, a tray like we did here and overnight left on top of Argo which is always on so this is always warm they dried out and that's it perfectly dry and ready to store but we like to do something a little bit different with our mousse on and I've got a needle and thread and a couple already strung and just indulge me a little bit put some acorns at the bottom as a stopper to stop them falling off. And what we do is pretty simple. Just pinch off the stem, because the stem of our mousseron uh, is quite tough. It's not very nice, whereas the rest of the mushroom is lovely. Simply thread them through the middle. Just do another one. And you get a nice string of mushrooms, which end up looking a bit like a, a decoration for your kitchen. These ones were strung just yesterday and they've already dried out. Now, they are again above the Argo, which is, which is 
keeping the air here a little bit warmer, but they'll dry out in any normal kitchen. If your kitchen is not too damp, they'll dry out just by themselves really easily. So they're very simple. Once you've dried them, you can leave them hanging like this in your kitchen, or you put them into glass jars, and I'll show you what we do there in just a minute. But these other mushrooms, like our field mushrooms here, hold a lot more moisture and they need a little bit more work to dry out. So what we do with these is we slice them and then again we've got a few different ways. I've seen homemade dehydrators online but we've got a few different ways that we can do it here. So first of all over here the biggest ones a horse mushroom that we actually found I've sliced and I've just put it on that cake drying rack over the arga. These were ones that we did the same to yesterday. They need a little bit more drying out though, so a couple of days on there and they're fine. What you can do is just use a cool oven. You want it well below 100 degrees, you don't want to cook your mushrooms and put them on something similar in a cool oven or an open oven and uh, they'll dry out reasonably quickly. Um, but by far the easiest way, and it's not a massive investment, is to get one of these. This is our dehydrator. And uh, what we do with the dehydrator again is, as you can see, slice the mushrooms, put them on the trays, pop them in, and this I set to 70 degrees, which is its top temperature and then put them on for about four hours and all those mushrooms will be nicely dehydrated uh, and ready to store. So let's see how Christopher's getting on. Shall we, shall we flip these over now? Yeah. Let's have a look at the other side. Ooh, that's looking good. You've done these before, haven't you? Yeah. Now that's looking pretty good. That's one side nearly done. Um, right, so back over here, I've got a load of different jars with different things in them. Um, now, some mushrooms I'll just put in a mixed pot, and that's what we've got here. So this is my summer, summer set. Uh, some chanterelles, some, some field mushrooms, some horse mushrooms. And uh, what you want when you dry out all those mushrooms is them to get to the point where they snap like this, where there's no moisture whatsoever. And uh, then you just need to put them in an airtight container. And because we've got a lot of our mixed mushrooms, we've used this one now. Keep that nice and airtight. And they'll stay perfectly usable for as long as they're in there dried. Uh, the reason I've mixed all of those is because they all have the same use for me. They're all really tasty mushrooms that will rehydrate nicely into whatever you cook them with. So you rehydrate them with water or mushroom stock or wine if you want to be a bit fancy. Um, but they'll rehydrate and be a lovely, lovely strong mushroom flavour because the flavour of uh, most of these mushrooms gets enhanced when they're dry. They actually get stronger. They lose about 80% of their overall volume and that's mainly through moisture. And what you get left with is the strong mushroomy flavor. So in here, there's quite a lot of mushrooms uh, to have filled that up over the last few months. But um, like I said, flavor wise, there's a lot more than there was probably before we started. Uh, the other ones I've got separated are our peppery bleats. This is a lovely mushroom that I haven't done a video on yet, but the reason I've got this separate is because crushed up, this is a nice pepper substitute. So it's kept separate because it's a different flavor. Same with our St. George's mushrooms. I always keep the St. George's mushrooms separate too because they've got a different flavor for me. It's much stronger and it works with, uh, well, not stronger than a porcini, um, but it's a strong flavor that works well with sort of creamy sauces, so different types of dishes. The other ones I've got separate, I've kept my dried puffballs separate because you have to prepare these a little bit, I'll just show you. So even though these are perfectly dry, they retain a bit of sponginess. And if you just put those into soups or stews or anything like that, you get spongy bits of mushroom that aren't so nice, but they've got a lovely flavour. So uh, what we do with them is we uh, spend a bit more time when we get them out powdering them to use them as mushroom stock. And then another one I've got separate is our Dryad Saddle, which is a lovely mushroom that you often find too much of. 
um, and drying them really, really does enhance the flavour. And the, the smell is quite incredible from these. But when rehydrated, they get a little bit leathery. So again, you want to blitz them or do something with them before you put them into any other dishes. Now, I think Christopher and our giant puffballs might be nearly ready. Let's just turn this one over again, do that side a little bit more and have a look at the other side of the others. So to, yeah, let's flip them all. Alright, they all look perfectly ready to me. So what we'll do, could I just have the spatulas? Alright, we'll just put them on there. Just to cool ever so slightly. And uh, put a bit more butter in here. Just to melt, and I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. Because what we've got here with our giant puffball is a really lovely, tasty mushroom. Uh, the problem is, when you cook it in these big slabs, which is what you're obviously tempted to do, you know, a nice big mushroom like that, you cut it into mushroom steaks. Uh, the thing is, you end up with a flavour that's lovely, but a texture that's not. If I show you here, we've got kind of floppy bit of mushroom, which uh, means that the texture kind of lets them down, um, but the flavour's great. So what we do is we add our own texture by making them into mushroom schnitzels, and it's this simple. So uh, what I've got is some beaten egg, and I've got some breadcrumb, which is you know easy to buy or easy to make. You just get some bread, let it go stale, and then grate it. Now into the breadcrumb, crumb. I'm going to put loads of pepper. Spice this up however you want to, coriander seeds nice, and just a little bit of salt just to season the breadcrumb. I'm going to mix it around. And then what I'm going to do, I'll just let these cool just a tiny little bit so that I can dip them in the egg without the egg immediately cooking. And then we're going to dip them in the breadcrumb. Same with these other ones. Obviously the egg is really just helping the breadcrumbs adhere to the mushrooms. See, they've all got a nice coating of breadcrumb on there. Now, we've got our hot pan. I'm just going to whack those back in for about, I don't know, maybe 40 seconds or so on each side, just basically until the mushrooms are nice and brown. What we do at this point is give those a little squinch down, Christopher, because mm -hmm. They're spongy mushrooms that get lots of air in them, and if you give them a little squidge, again, that gets rid of a little bit of that floppiness. I'm just gonna wipe the egg off my hands if you wanna see what Christopher's do. <coughs> Looks like you're doing well. Um, so have you given them all a squidge? I just need to do this one. Um. That's good. So we're good. Now flip them over. Okay. <coughs> and we're nearly there. Should I should squeeze them again. Yeah, give them another little squidge on that side. It just helps brown off the breadcrumbs a little bit quicker. Just makes them a bit less airy. I think 
I think they're just about done. Um, you probably want the pan a little bit hotter than this. I'll just take over now. Sorry, Christopher. No Too many cooks. But um, yeah, you probably want the pan just ever so slightly hotter than this. But you saw those cooked pretty quickly anyway. And then what we've got now is some of our chickweed, some sorrel, you know that one as well, and then just pick some mallow flowers to make the plate look a little bit better. And here we've got some, uh, just a little splodge of mayonnaise, uh, nothing special, and we're gonna have a little taste. So go on, cut yourself a bit of schnitzel. Let's put a little bit of salad on it too. said that before as well. No coaching involved. They are really nice. So if you want to find out more, we're running courses all over the country over the next couple of months. Have a look at our website www.wildfooduk.com to find out about any of them.